romance and young adult books they were just superior this month it's what really pulled me out of feeling very slumpy and very meh about my reading and I just Hello my loves and thank you for joining me, it's Kirsten and today we are doing January's reading wrap up in the smash or pass style which is something that I love doing, it's been so much fun since I've changed up my reading wrap ups to this, very simple, I go through all the books that I've read for the month and whether I would smash or pass. Let's get straight into it, I have this stack of books behind me to talk about although I thought I would change it up a little bit because what I've been doing is having a separate shelf for all the books I need to read for the month and I've really enjoyed doing that but it has also shown me the books that I didn't get to that were on my TBR so I thought I'd quickly go over those. I have two books that I just didn't get to in the month of January. We have Every Exquisite Thing by Laura Stephen. This is the second TBR it's been on and the second time I haven't read it. I am really excited to read it but I just think I wasn't in the mood. This is like a young adult dark academia twist on The Picture of Dorian Gray. So it does sound really good but yeah, I just wasn't in the mood, didn't get around to it. And then we also had a reread, which is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. Obviously, it's a reread. I know I'm going to really enjoy it. However, I did swap this one out for a different reread, although it didn't match the prompt, which was one word title. I, I did already do a reread, so I wasn't so worried if I didn't get to this one, but I would like to reread it soon because I did really enjoy this one. This is kind of like a strange book to even try and describe, but it's like a mystery, weird magical thing going on that doesn't even give you anything to go off of and I'm sorry about that but it's a weird book if you've read it you'd understand and if you haven't then going in knowing not much about it is probably the way to tackle it it's just a very strange book so let's get into all the books I have actually read for the month although I do start off with my dnfs and I had one dnf normally the dnf would be a pass however the dnf this time is the vampire and other tales of the macabre by multiple different authors. I'd already read The Vampire from this collection so I wanted to try and read the rest of the short stories from this collection. It was actually voted on between this one and a different classic book and this is the one that won. The only thing is I just wasn't in a classic mood but the ones that I did read I only had a couple that I didn't actually like. There was actually quite a few in here that I really enjoyed and there was one short story in particular that I do keep thinking of and I want to read more by that author which was Monos and Damonos by Edward bowler which I keep saying I want to see if that author's written anymore and I still haven't done it so you know what let's take a few seconds and do that now oh okay so Edward Bowler has actually got a double barreled name it's Edward Bowler Lightning oh Lightning no Edward Bowler Lighten um they have written other books but they are not very well known so it will be interesting to see if any of these I'm interested in. I'll have a look at the synopsis and decide. But yes, they have written other things. As I was saying, so normally this would be a pass. However, the stories that were in here I did like enough that I'm like, it's a smash, but a very light smash. And the only reason why I DNF'd it is just because I wasn't in the mood for it. Short story collections, I do generally on the whole enjoy, but I just wasn't ready to read a classic book this month. You're going to see what I actually enjoyed this month. And it was a fun reading month. Like it was so fun. And this book paired with another book was bringing on a bit of a reading slump. And I was like, this is just not the time, but I know that I will enjoy other books in here. It's just, not the time for this one. Then we have a load of ebooks, so we'll go through those. I have three ebooks that I read in January. One technically I read end of December into January, and that is Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. This one I'm actually going to say pass. It's not one that I remembered much about, and honestly, I'd forgot I'd even read it until I went through my reading journal. It was fine, but it just didn't have that same level as Divine Rivals had. Like, I much preferred Divine Rivals. I think that was a really good book. Very much a historical wartime romance with a little sprinkling of fantasy thrown in and I feel like Ruthless Files did expand on the fantasy side of things but it just didn't work like the pacing didn't work for me and I, I just wasn't as invested unfortunately like there were definitely pages where I was skim reading and just kind of skipping through it it's a shame and I know a lot of people probably will really like this book it's just for me it just didn't quite work so yeah this one's gonna be a pass from me it's been forgettable and I know that give it a couple more weeks and and yeah I would have forgot I read it considering that I read it at the start of this month it was the first book I finished the 2024 and I have forgotten 
until I'm like, oh right, yeah, I did read that this month. And so I think the events that happened in that book are going to become very forgettable very quickly for me. That's a pass. I think I would definitely pick up Divine Rivals to have for my shelves, but I don't think I'd bother getting Briefless Vows. Then we have, <laughs> this is where my reading started to change and I was like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna like this, but you know what? I need a palette cleanser. I'm feeling a bit slumpy. I wanna read something that's completely different. And I read King of Thrath by Anna Huang and I picked this one up because of Jan. She was talking about it quite a lot and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna give it a try, see what this is all about. This was so fun. So this is the first book in the Kings of Sin series. She's also done the Twisted Love series and I had so much fun with this. It's not a book that I necessarily would have picked up because I've always said that I'm not much of a romance reader. I don't really care about contemporary romance, la la la. But that it was good. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. It was just so much fun. There was so much drama in it. It is definitely rich people drama. You're following two perspectives. You've got Vivian and you've got Dante and Dante's being blackmailed into marrying Vivian. Vivian doesn't know about this, but she's been like, it's an arranged marriage decided by her parents. So she's got to go along with it. And you're just seeing everything from there. It is a lot of fun. It was really entertaining and it was exactly what I needed in that moment. And so I'm really pleased I actually picked that one up and decided to go, you know what, let's just have a palette cleanser. Let's just change genre completely. And it really worked. So yeah, that was great. Going along with the romance theme though, I then read Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. And I'm actually not going to say too much about this one because that is coming out in the vlog that's coming out after this video. It was good though. I enjoyed it. It was an interesting time. It was a bit ridiculous and a bit juvenile, but it was also fun. And I'm going to leave it there because I have a whole vlog that's coming out dedicated to that and two more books, which I'll mention in this wrap up. Um, but that is a smash and so was King of Thrath and that is all I'm giving you for that one. Part of that vlog I did also pick up The Secret Service of Tea and Treason by India Halton. Again this is another smash and I'm not going to go into any more detail than that because as I said that is coming out in the very next vlog. This was, it was a lot of fun, it was me trying out different romance books for the vlog and it was a lot of fun and I ended up enjoying it a lot more than what I thought and the results are in that maybe Maybe I do actually really like romance because I had a fantastic time reading this. And honestly, this reading month has shown me that romance and young adult books, they were just superior this month. It's what really pulled me out of feeling very slumpy and very meh about my reading. And I just had so much fun with it. And um, yeah, this one is part of it. But again, I'll be talking about it more in that vlog, but just safe to say that like Life Love Hypothesis, this was also very ridiculous in very different ways, but a lot of fun to read, so. Yeah, smash. We then have Only a Monster by Vanessa Len. This I had a lot of fun with. I'm still a little bit conflicted as to the age rating of this book because in my local Waterstones, it's shelved in the adult fantasy section, but this reads like a young adult fantasy. So I would say it's more young adult fantasy just from the way it reads but I had so much fun with this one. This is kind of the book that was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I absolutely love this. And it kind of started from then. I think from about the third week of January, my reading just went up. Like I was having so much fun with everything I was reading. And after I decided to that, yeah, I'm gonna DNF the short story classic collection. I had such a good time. It was so much fun. And I was just reading for the enjoyment of reading. And that's what this book did. So this book, we're following our main character, Joan and Joan, has always been told that her family are monsters. She's always just seen them as very strange and a bit eccentric until she finds out that they're actually monsters. And in this story, you're following the monster of the story, not the hero of the story. I really enjoyed this one. It's got time travel magic and it kind of takes all your usual tropes and twists them on their head because obviously you're following the monster of the story, not the hero of the story. And you're looking at what makes a monster, what makes a hero, who gets to decide that, who gets to decide that the hero should kill all the monsters, what about the monster's side of story. And I just think it was absolutely brilliant. I really enjoyed this one. There is the second book which is out, however I do think you could read this as a standalone book if you wanted to. I can see where the second book's going to expand from, but I also think it does work as a standalone. I just thought this was really good. I I haven't seen many people talking about it and it definitely deserves more love. It was really interesting. I really liked the way it subverted things and the themes that it was looking at. Like you could definitely delve deeper into those themes if you wanted to, or you could take it as more of a surface level fun fantasy book. I think it was just so clever in what it was doing and I couldn't predict anything. And that's what I enjoyed about this book is I didn't know what was gonna happen next. Like I would think, oh, it's gonna go this way and then it would change and it would be like, no, something completely different. Like it's completely different to how 
I thought it was going to be and it worked so well. I really enjoyed it. I liked Joan as a main character, the way that she was so hopeful and so blindly sure that yes I can do this, yes I can do that and you're seeing all the setbacks that she's got, the realities that she's got to face, the choices that she's got to make, like it was really good. I did enjoy this one so yeah that was a smash. Another smash we have Anatomy A Love Story by Dana Schwartz. This is another young adult book. This is more historical fiction but of course we do have a bit of a love story in here. We're following two different main characters. We've got our first main character who is Hazel and she is from the upper class of society she knows that she's got to get married. She, this marriage has been arranged since her birth really. She's, she's resigned to it. She doesn't want to do it but she's resigned because that's what happens. Ladies like in society at that time like that that's the way it is but she has a passion for anatomy. She wants to learn about the human body. She wants to become a surgeon. She wants to help people. However because she is a woman during this time which is 1817 in Edinburgh so amazing setting it's frowned upon they're never going to let her do this, nobody's ever going to be interested in coming to her and she really has to face some tough choices in here but obviously she's been conditioned her whole life to accept women are to be seen, not heard and her role is to get married and have children and she is going to like, inherit nothing from her family's estate because it's all going to go to her brother and she's just facing the realities of that. The second perspective we have is Jack and Jack is from the poorer side of Edinburgh and you see how he is a resurrectionist but he also works at a theatre company. He is juggling a couple different things just to try and get food and be able to survive another day and you see how their two stories end up interacting. I really enjoyed it. This one I will say is very predictable whereas Only a Monster really changed what I thought was going to happen and I really enjoyed it because it was so different. This one was very predictable. I would say if you liked Stalking Jack the Ripper by Karen Maniscalco, give this one a try. It's got very similar vibes. It's just set in Edinburgh instead of London, but I enjoyed it. I still really enjoyed it. I can understand, again, this is another one that can be read as a standalone. There is a second book out. I'd be very interested to see where that second book is going to continue on from because it does wrap up pretty much on its own but there are still a few things that I would be interested in exploring. So I'm going to get that second book. I will be reading it hopefully soon. I say that, probably soon is probably like within the next six months. Yeah, this was really good. I really enjoyed it. I liked what it was exploring. I liked the look at the cultural divide when it comes to wealth, the things that it entitled you to. I really enjoyed the setting of this book. So yeah, this was a good smash for me. It was what I wanted. It was a really easy read. So as much as it was predictable, I still think it was good. Because I know I like books like Stalking Jack the Ripper with that sort of setting, it works. And so I knew I was going to like this one. Um, I'd just been putting it off for ages and yeah. I did like it, so I'm very pleased with that. But then the book that put me into the reading slump, or pretty much had me at the reading slump because I just did not enjoy this, and that's Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. I did read this as an ebook because I have the physical copy, I always show it in this part. I didn't enjoy this one. I had, it just wasn't good in my opinion. Lots of people have really enjoyed this book. For me, it just didn't really work. Now I knew when I picked this one up that this was gonna be outside my comfort zone. It's a contemporary story that is, I support women's rights, but I also support women's wrongs and this book is just women's wrongs like that's what it is we're following our main character Irina and Irina is a horrible horrible person she is horrible to her friends she's horrible to everyone that she comes in contact with but she tries to justify it all and because you're seeing it from her perspective you're seeing how she justify things but you know that she's a liar she, you know that she manipulates things and so you cannot trust anything she says in this book like absolutely nothing and I just didn't like it I didn't like Irina as a character the actual story didn't go anywhere I know there was lots of commentary on things and you could definitely pull things out of it but I just I just didn't like it I was not enjoying this it's a short book I mean it doesn't look short but it is actually a short book it's under 300 pages I just didn't like it I didn't enjoy it I like the cover because I think you know the font with this black and white photo like I like that but it just I just didn't like the book I really didn't and there is nothing else that I could, I mean I could really go into things but at the end of the day I didn't enjoy this book. For me I didn't find there was anything to pull from this. I can understand how some people would because of the comments it makes on society but I just think there are other books that have done it better in my opinion and I did not enjoy this. So that's past and also what sent me into a reading slump, almost. I mean I was still reading but I wasn't enjoying it and that's when I changed it up, started reading YA and romance and it worked and I loved it which is two things that I didn't think would work for me and mainly because like I feel like I was like 
getting away from young adult. I mean, certain young adult I was still enjoying, but on the whole, I was moving away from that. And romance, I've mainly always been a romance if it's a subplot person rather than the main part of the story. And yeah, this month just proves that maybe I don't know my reading taste because I have loved the young adult books that I've picked up and I've loved all the different types of romance that I've tried and it's been great. But yeah, I think, I think I'm just gonna stay clear of books like Boy Parts in future because I don't tend to get on with them, so we're gonna stay clear from that sort of book. I do have two manga that I read. I finished volume three of Dead Man's Wonderland. We were, me and my partner have been reading this series together and we were pretty much three quarters of the way through this one and then we read volume four. This was a lot of fun. I do enjoy this one. We read this one day when we were going down to Ashford to do a bit of shopping and it was like an hour long train journey. So we decided to read it during that. It was a lot of fun. I did enjoy it. So this is Dead Man Wonderland. We are following a main character who is wrongfully imprisoned for a crime he did not commit, but where he is imprisoned is a private prison that brings in funds to invigorate Japan, like bring in money to help different things about Japan. Except this prison, the way they do that is through these different games that they broadcast, but the games are a lot more deadly than what the people watching didn't realise. To be fair, I think, you know, people do realise what's actually going on, but it kind of just comments on the fact that we're so morbid that we would watch it anyway, and we would find entertainment in that. And it's, um, hitting all these different prison inmates together and they've got to fight to survive. It's a lot more to it than that and we get into that part where it's starting to develop a little bit more but I enjoy it like it's just a fun thing and manga again is quite good for breaking up things. I'm still going to put these as a smash because I like this series and I was pleased to continue on with it and it was a nice little reprieve from what I was reading but yeah I want to continue on with this series but I need to find the other volumes first before I can do that but it's a good time and I enjoy it because I'm reading it with my partner and that's really fun to do. Okay we're down to the last four books. We have This Charming Man by C.K. McDonald. This is the second book in the Stranger Time series and this is just a lot of fun. This is Paranormal Mystery and we have The Stranger Times which is a newspaper in Manchester that investigates these different paranormal things. It is really funny, really silly. The humour in here is exactly my sort of humour. It's quite dark in tone sometimes but it just really works. We have quite a wide range of characters but I think it works really well. It just It's just a lot of fun. Like each character has their own little quirks, their own little things about them. In the first book they're investigating something that ends up with different, I can't even say really because it's all about paranormal creatures and I don't want to give away what each one is about but I'm pretty sure from the cover of this you can tell what this one is going to be about and that is of vampires. It's really fun. I really enjoyed it. This is just a really good series if you want something that breaks up darker books for something that is just really fun and entertaining but also with a bit of a mystery going on. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this. There is lots going on in it but yeah, this is a smash. I really do enjoy it. And again, kind of goes with everything else I've been reading where I didn't really think I was a person that liked humour like this in my books, but actually I've really enjoyed it. And it's a bit like um, The Secret Service of Tea and Treason. That's also got that kind of same humour where it's laughing at itself. It does that in this Charming Man as well. So yeah, apparently that sort of like humour really works for me as well. Then we have a book that was for the book club pick for my discord channel so if you ever want to join I'll try and have it linked below. I've been having a couple of issues with that lately but I'll try and have that linked below for you and that is The Cloisters by Catty Hayes. This was a mixed book. It started off really interesting for me and I really did enjoy it. It's a dark academia book and it starts off in the vein of dark academia where you know a murder has happened and then you're going back in time to see what led to that murder and we're following a main character who her father has died. She's dealing with grief. I think that portrayal of it started off really strong um, and so she gets accepted to do a summer internship at the Met Museum but she gets accepted into the cloisters part of it where they're focusing on looking at tarot. They're putting together a exhibition around tarot. Things get really dark, really twisted because like a dark academia book it's where you become so obsessed with things you start toe in the lines of what is morally correct. It started off really interesting. I liked learning about different things to do with tarot. I don't know how much of it is actually accurate but it was really interesting to read nonetheless. I liked the atmosphere. I thought that was really good. It is very slow paced but then it kind of the pacing kind of changed. When the murder actually happens it was like oh plop murder and that's it. No one was really bothered by it. There wasn't really any explanation of what was going on. Like it just 
happened out the blue and I'm like wait what it just didn't really work and for me it started kind of falling apart and then it was like highlighting other things where I was thinking it was going to go deeper into so it would start talking about topics of like academia and elitism within academia but it would just do surface level comments it wouldn't actually dive deep into anything then the tarot stuff started petering off and it just didn't really work for me so unfortunately this one's actually more of a pass because I think it's just going to be really forgettable I also kind of want to keep it on my shelves though because it is so beautiful I do love this cover and I do want to have this on my shelves as part of my dark academia collection but I also know it's not going to be one that I'll probably reread it's just not going to stay with me like I don't think it's it's a dark academia book yes but it just doesn't go quite deep enough into it for me if I don't know if that makes sense it's one of those ones that if it wasn't for being so pretty I probably would unhaul it and I still am tempted to because I need shelf space but it is so gorgeous I just yeah it just didn't quite work which is a shame right so then the last two books are massive chunky books we have the reread for the month which is House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mars and this was the second book in the Crescent City series. Crescent City series is a urban fantasy series it's her first official adult fantasy series we have loads of different magical beings you've got vampires shifters and shifters of all sorts of types you've got fae you've got merfolk you've got angels and so much stuff going on there are so many different magical beings in this book and in the first book you're following Bryce who is half human half fey she is being roped into this investigation of some murders that are happening because she has connections to the different people that have been involved in the murders um, and she gets told that she has to help as part of this investigation and she's going to have fallen angel hunt be her bodyguard through it it expands. The plot line expands so much from that first initial murder mystery book. Reread this one in preparation for House of Flame and Shadow. Again, this is going to be part of the vlog that's coming out after this video. And I had so much fun with this. It was great. Is it the best written series? No, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's really not. However, when it comes to Sarah Jo Mars, I do have rose tinted glasses just because of nostalgia. I've been following her book for years. I think since like the second or third Throne of Glass book came out, I've been following them. I will always read and enjoy her books. I really like her character work. I do think there are pacing issues in both books but I enjoyed it and I just had a lot of fun with it and that is all I'm going to say because especially I do not want any spoilers for House of Flame and Shadow because it is such a new book and I was just lucky that I was able to read it in such a short amount of time um, as this came out but I will not be going into any spoilers and I don't in that vlog either because it's just not fair but I did really enjoy reading these so my read a month ended up being massive um, just because of those two books alone because that's pretty much 2,000 pages on their own by the way those two books complete smashes of course because as I said nostalgia for this her work but yeah so overall this reading month has been really good I'm just pleased that I did change up what I was reading when I was starting to feel a bit slumpy because it definitely could have gone into a bit of a lacklustre reading month but it ended up working really well for me because I realising that actually I do like romance forward books that they're really fun to read having young adult books like those were the main things that I enjoyed this month I had so much fun with it and they're always books that I'm like oh I'll read them occasionally to break up my reading whereas this month that was at the fourth front and I'm so pleased I did that because I had such a good reading time I felt so invigorated and so happy with my reading that it's been good so yeah anyway let me know have you read any of these what was your favorite book of the month let me know all of those below and thank you so much for watching if you have made it this far and you don't know what to comment then put a snake in the comments below put a snake emoji and uh yeah gonna leave it there so thank you so so much for watching i know i always say that several times but i really really do appreciate it it means so much and if you have enjoyed this video please do consider giving it that thumbs up subscribe and comment in those three things really help this channel grow so thank you so much i will have my social media links and anyone i've mentioned linked below and i will of course catch you in the very next video